Hello and welcome back to another video in the world of Monster Hunter. This one is all about the Devastation's Thorns and I'm calling it the Broom and Board because it looks like a friggin broom. Now the main reason I decided to cover this weapon is because, well, it's Nergagante's. He's like the first truly powerful Elder Dragon you actually come across and all of his weapons actually look really, really cool. They've got pretty high damage. Dragon damage is there as well, so that comes in kind of handy. And they've got a lovely amount of blue sharpness, which is not affected by handicraft. No matter how much handicraft you put on this thing, nothing changes. And that sadly is true for all of his weapons. So I figured since this is a very common charge blade that a lot of people use, particularly when they are around the HR 13, 14 area, I thought I'd give a good build a crack. Now the problem with this then is, as I've just said, most people come across this weapon HR 13, 14. This is not a build that you can do at that level, I'm afraid. However, if you have got this weapon, you're thinking, well, I've put a lot of effort into it. I kind of want to keep it and just keep going then have I got a build for you. So without any further ado, let's get into the equipment and skills. Now, unlike my other charge blade builds, this actually uses a complete dragon setup minus one. So we have Devastation to Thorns, obviously with a health augment, you could put an affinity in there if you like, just to be even a bit more OP and you're wanting 95% affinity. But it's entirely up to you. I've got an attack decoration in there with the weapon. Draken Alpha Helmet with a critical and iron wall. Damascus Chest Beta with three experts. Draken Alpha Gloves with two tenderizer. Draken Alpha Waist with your final tenderizer. Draken Alpha Boots with magazine. And rounding it off, we have the Artillery Charm 3. Now, obviously, this is going to give us Behemoth's Master's Touch, and this is the only way I can think to compensate for the fact that you quite simply can't get white sharpness. So we're going to go with a stupid amount of blue. Roughly 600 points on blue, to be precise. And that will only go up if you pick an Affinity Augment over a Health, because it means you're going to be hitting crits that much more often. Obviously, you have Elemental Airborne. We don't really care for that. It's a Charge Blade. Critical Eye level 7, Attack Boost level 4, Critical Boost level 3, Artillery 3, Weakness Exploit 3. Sadly, we only have Focus 3, but it's better than Focus 1, let's admit. Airborne, we don't care about. Power Prolonger, honestly, I have no idea whether this affects the charge you can keep in your shield. I don't think it does. Someone in the comments might be able to correct me or give the correct information on there. Guard level 1, which is always really handy and a necessity for Charge Blade, as well as capacity boost for your files. Overall, this build actually hits pretty, pretty darn hard. And again, according to the damage calculator on Honey Hunters, this is pretty frigging even on terms of physical raw damage. It can sneak ahead in terms of dragon damage as long as you are hitting the correct hit zones on a monster that is at least three star weak to dragon. However, that only applies to your hits. The files do fall a bit short by five damage per file. So you're dealing 30 less damage using the files on Devastation's Thorns as you would over on Diabolus Tyrannus 2. Sadly, that is just due to the fact that it doesn't have the uh, same level of insane raw. So yeah, this weapon and setup does actually work quite well. It's pretty darn good. I'm kind of enjoying it. It's not the most powerful against things like Rathian and Rathalos 
but as your Rathalos and Pink Rathian, namely, I am actually doing a little bit better in terms of clear time compared to the Diabolos or the Tower of Strong Arm Horn, purely just because of the um, makeup of the dragon damage over the pure raw. Like I said, that as long as the monster is really, really weak to dragon, the dragon element that you'll be dealing out is just enough to creep it ahead a little bit and it does make up for the lost damage on the files so you can kind of argue both ways and to be honest as well one of the main things that i have noticed as well which i'm really liking i kind of want to do a see if i can do a quick setup using this or similar to this with uh tara strong arm horn because i don't really care for diablos anymore it looks ugly but the one thing I am genuinely loving about this is just the fact that even with how overpowered the meta charge blades are, I am still having to sharpen. During a fight, I am having to sharpen, and particularly if you're playing solo, you don't really get a break to go and sharpen your weapon unless the monster runs. So finding a way to get Master's Touch in there possibly won't be too bad. And I, I would say is potentially very worthwhile so i'm probably going to have a little bit of a gander to see if there's something around i can do with that maybe a slight alternative even if it means that i have to drop a slight amount of efr just to make up for the simple fact that i won't have to sharpen as much that could be for me at least quite helpful so this weapon has given me some pretty darn inspirate good inspiration to continue on with this weird little charge blade mix up i've got one more coming before i'm going to do some weird and wacky shit with the strong arm horn but generally speaking yeah this build's pretty darn good you're not gonna break the game with it it's not like the most powerful thing ever but it's definitely worth a look even if i do say so myself and yeah thank you very much for watching i hope to see you guys pretty darn soon have fun Good luck and don't die. It's bad for the health. Turn up.